And welcome back to another super cool radio interview. I'm your host, Matthew Thomas. Thank you so much for tuning in. I got some great guests joining me at this time. Earlier this year, melodic progressive metal band Mass of Amara released their second EP entitled Through the Ether. Please welcome Mass of Amara. How y'all doing? Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Very excited to chat with you guys. Man, we're excited. Thank you for having us. Of course, of course. And before we go further, I will introduce everybody here real quick. So we got Ella on vocals. We have Preston on guitar. That is me. We also have Victor on guitar. Uh, Joshua on guitar and Joseph on drums. <laughs> Did I get all that right? Yeah. Awesome. Good stuff, man. <laughs> All right. I'm well, I'm glad my research has paid off. So, uh, I know we got quite a bit to discuss. As I said, we, you guys got the, the latest EP that we're going to be discussing and all of that. But before we get to that, this is a question that I asked a lot of the guests that I have on this podcast. So, I'm curious for you guys, uh, for all of you, if you could have dinner with any two musicians throughout history, living or deceased, who would they be? Fuck. Uh, for me, I'm going to have to say Joe Duplantier from Gojira and Lane Staley from Alice in Chains. I'd probably fucking love hanging out with those two. I'll pass the mic. Um, David Bowie and Bjork. I would probably say Dimebag and... <laughs> Probably Lane Staley or like Kurt Cobain or something too. Yeah. Fuck, I think uh, Devin Townsend would be pretty interesting. Uh, be a long lunch. And then, fuck, I don't know. Uh, I'll say Randy Rhodes. Big influence. Randy Rhodes. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why these two people popped in my head. It'd be cool to eat with them. I think Fat Mike from No Effects. <laughs> And Ozzy Osbourne probably would be pretty wild. Very diverse uh, set of musicians right there. I like the <laughs> Fat Mike and Ozzy. That definitely, that would be something. That <laughs> <laughs> Very nice, very nice. All right, so now, folks are on Mass from Mara now. So as I said, you guys have a new EP out through the ether. So before we dive into the music side, uh, how did you guys come up with the name for the EP? Um, That's going to be Ella. Well, um, I just like going into like spiritual stuff and whenever you're trying to find yourself, you end up going into like a lot of different places in your head that you didn't know existed. And so kind of thought of it as like an ether, you know, the abyss, you know, you know, you never know what's going to be there. So that's why I thought of ether. <laughs> right on, right on. Well, I, I like the name. I think it you know kind of matches just kind of the the vibe and overall like uh, sound of the uh, EP. I thought it was a great uh, uh, title choice for the EP. So now, folks on the music side now. Uh, so anyone who's not checked out through the ether, what can they expect musically and lyrically? Oh man, it's. Uh, I think off the bat, it's pretty diverse. Like we have the way I described it. Um, it's very like for me, very push and pull. Like it's um pretty aggressive, and then it takes you through a very clean and like pretty section, only to like drag you through the mud at the end for like the outro of like one of our like two of our songs, maybe three. Yeah, actually, something like that. So it's like pretty diverse in my opinion. I don't know if anybody else wants to tag in. 
Yeah, definitely the push and pull. You know, I think about like I love mosh pits. I love fucking moshing, <laughs> but I get so tired. So like when I write music, you know, when we write music, I try to build in those like breaks. You know, those clean, kind of nice. You can take a breather, still enjoy like some good melodies, but then just get fucking like punched in the face, like you know, thirty seconds later. So. Well, I, I like the search, uh, um, the the breaks throughout uh, for because um, you can't. I mean, you can mosh but all the time, but you not you need those uh, breaks in between. <laughs> uh, but so I, I like the kind of strategic. Uh, strategi Sorry, I can't talk today. I like how you kind of built those breaks in with everything, but very nicely done uh, with everything. I do like the um, you have the clean vocals, but then like as you said, kind of gets a little bit. You know, you got those dirty sections in there, which I really enjoy. Uh, you got a nice blend and balance of that. Yeah, it's it. Would, uh, what I like about it though is that like it came very like naturally, because um, I I also like you know clean sections or like very melodic parts or breaks. And uh, when me and Victor got together on some of those songs, um, I think I think it was like maybe ripped when we were ha when we were hanging out at the old apartment. You were like, I don't know about the clean break, and I was like, Nah, bro, we got to keep it, mm -hmm. something like that. And then um, I tied it together with like writing just like the outro or something. And then that was like our goal. It's just, just like, let's throw them through the mud one more time before we, you know, exit the song. <laughs> oh, very nice. Well, as I said, I, I very much enjoy uh, the EP. So like, I'm curious for you guys, like, how was it uh, writing and recording uh, through the ether? And was it a different experience compared to the first EP? Definitely a different experience because like for for us, the when we started this project, it was just me and Ella. And at the time it was like, hey, like we have a few songs. Um, what are we going to do? Like, are we going to record it, release it anyway? Are we going to wait until we like build up a lineup? And we chose to like not wait, like let's just record it and get it out there. That was for the first EP. And then um, once we released that is when I got these two in on the project. Um, Joseph was looking for a new band. Victor, I was like, hey, man, you're mine now. Like, <laughs> so we were working together and he like just moved from Seattle and he like showed up with an eight string. And I was like, I don't know who this guy is, but he's mine. And uh, so um, that was kind of when like the second half of like, I guess like our era um, kind of comes into play. We had like he had some songs on the back burner. I had some songs on the back burner and we like put them together and we were like okay this is something so then we recorded that actually together and then a little bit after that um first of all we don't have a bass player and then my one of my absolute closest friends josh hits me up and he's like hey man like do y'all need a bass player and i was like i mean yeah but then we did like two rehearsals with him on bass and i was like nah bro like he's gonna be we're just gonna be like white chapel or periphery three guitars and um, so he kind of got in on the tail end of like recording the second EP and like sent us some cool solo stuff or like layers and uh, super sick. So it was more collaborative on the second round of like our EP rather than like the first EP was just me and her. If anybody else wants to tag. And also like going into the studio, we had gone into the machine shop. So that was cool to experience because um, the first one we just did it in my room and like that his old apartment and then on this one you know the second one it was just like victor preston writing together all in the studio that was really fun we like took a week off and we're just together over there and yeah yeah i think if you if you listen to ascended off the through the ether that's the first song where we just started with like one riff and then just totally built it up kind of organically as a group so Hopefully you can hear the you know the new influences there and all that. <laughs> oh no, for sure. As I said earlier, I very much enjoy the album and sound like yeah, you guys had a great time, you know, writing and recording it. So but I'm curious because as you mentioned, you guys have no bass player, that there's three guitar players. So how is it like like writing three guitar parts for each song? We actually, at least for me, like I'm not considering a third guitar player, like when we're writing or if I'm writing at home or something. Um, I usually just do a pair of guitars, you know, like one pan left and right. And like, that's just the rhythm or like, usually there's like a drone going on, like in a very ambient, um, heavy section. 
And um, if anything, like that's maybe the third guitar part, you know. But if it's like a breakdown, it's just like, well, everyone's just playing the same part, you know, as long as it's syncopated, we should be all right. Um, so I would say like the mindset really isn't different, even though we have three guitar players. Um, but we do run our bass track live through um, our back tracks. And obviously we track bass ourselves or like we just gin bass all over the all over the place. <laughs> so it's we definitely like got bass, you know. <laughs> Very good. I'm, I'm glad to hear you guys got bass with that. But uh, but I so like uh, like a live setting. Um, uh, as you as you talk about, you guys have the tracks. But like visually, do you have people come up to you like after shows or like you know uh, uh, after sets and stuff like that? Go, where's the bass player? Oh uh, yeah, all the time. <laughs> They're always like, man, we noticed that we got you all y'all got three guitar players up there. Where's the bass player? And we're like, he's in the speakers, dude. Like, it's <laughs> funny. I've got. One time I got this girl and she, I guess she, you know, really wasn't aware of what an eight string guitar looked like. So she was like, yeah, y'all had a bass player. And I was like, no, that was a guitar. She's like, no, it was a bass. I saw it. And I was like, no, it was a guitar. <laughs> so there's some people that are, you know, probably watching this be like, the bass player is awesome. Look at that, Look at that eight string bass. <laughs> so how long did that back and forth for that conversation last? It was a little while. It was a little while. It was funny because her name was Mary and my name's Joseph. So when she's like, "My name's Mary," I'm like, "Oh, I'm Joseph." It was it was a show at the mix. It was it was a funny little conversation. It lasted a little while. Did did you invent, eventually convince her that you're actually a guitar player? Oh yeah, I I pointed out that yeah, there's guitars with more than you know six strings. Okay, very good. <laughs> all right so now uh i did want to highlight this is my favorite song off the track which is on uh, off the ep which is unspoken so you guys filmed a music video for that song so like, how was it filming the video that was fun <laughs> it was it was fun but like also stressful in a in a way because we had um we had a f original spot um selected at first and the day of the shoot, like our camera guys got to the place before us and they were like not there to like open it up. And so they were like, hey, we're going to need to find a new location. And I was like stressing out. I was like, fuck, like we got to find a new spot to like film this in in like, you know, two hours. And uh, Joseph, where he works, um, his bar was like totally cool with us just like getting there like really early and just like setting up black backdrops to film uh, the musician shots. And then we went to an abandoned house where we did all of her, her shots. And uh, so for me, it was also on my birthday when I filmed, when we filmed that it was my birthday and I was like, Hey man, we got to keep it going. <laughs> but, um, but my experience was, it was a lot of fun. It was really cool. Oh yeah. We saw a rat in the house. It was really fun. It was just very dirty and like, smells really bad but we're still grateful that we were able to have a place to film so you know <laughs> no and like literally it, it was perfect though for what we were trying to go for so i mean it worked out but um i was like a little nervous for that one just because like i had to try and do some acting so like try to do my best with that but yeah <laughs> Oh, no, I, I, as I said, I very much enjoy how the music video, uh, you know, came out. So, like, with, with you, with the acting, so, like, how was it, like, you know, obviously there's the, the music side of it, but, like, how is it, like, transitioning to the acting side? Um, It's just a lot easier for me when I have to be angry, I guess. So, like, all I have to do is just throw stuff. And so, <laughs> you know, throwing stuff, that gets to me. So that's how I was able to really get into it and just break things. Yeah, I cut my knee doing it, and it was, but it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad here overall, you know, minus the few kind of hiccups along the way, you guys were able to film that, and I, as I said, it turned out amazing. So, like, how was it coming up for, like, the, the concept for the music video? Well, at first, um, just, like, getting the, the, the theme of the song, which is, like, about drug addiction and all that. And so I just took references from, like, movies and, like, shows that kind of talk about that. And I just kind of 
did like a rough draft of like scenes that I wanted and that's like what I presented to the person I was going to film and edit uh, the video and yeah that's how that went well right on uh, yeah I very much enjoy it. I'll leave a link to that in the description of this podcast well everyone please check it out so now I'm kind of transitioning to I got a few questions about you guys' live set I did also want to cover before we wrap this interview up for you guys do you approach performing live differently than writing and recording music yeah i would say i would say we definitely do um a big role that josh has played is like when he joined the band he was like all right this is how we're gonna run our tracks and like in-ear mixes and everything and i was like cool because how i was gonna do it was like not <laughs> not like the way to do it um so him and victor actually put a lot of time into um running the live show and um it gives me, I guess, a second to like breathe, I guess, because <laughs> um, it, it's it's still some stuff that I'm not like too understanding on. But they have Kempers and uh, quad cortexes, so they um, they do a lot of heavy lifting as far as the live show goes. And I say like, yeah, we probably put we have a different mindset when it comes to live than we do with like writing a song. If anybody wants to tag in. Yeah, so essentially me coming in as like the third guitarist, right? Um, there's some songs that are already written and I kind of have to figure out where I want to sit in a live setting. So I have to like come up with uh, with certain parts to like make it a little more interesting and make it flow and fit in the song live. So I'll play like an octave note uh, on a certain riff or, or something to make it sound like a wall, of, like a massive wall of... Uh, in your face you know what i mean um and as far as like setting up the live shows you're like yeah we run tracks um all on the laptop and me and victor the three of us get together and we're like hey we need to put some tones together and we get everything together and the laptop like does all our switching it, it plays the bass it has the click in our ears so it's like super super tight and like convenient for us we hear everything in the ears and it's awesome i love it <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think another thing Josh brought was like starting to think about, you know, with three guitars, it's not as simple as just having one guitar fully left, one guitar fully right. And so we were like starting to think about like panning and stuff and even like programming that, you know, when someone plays a lead, they switch to the center and then, you know, everyone else goes to the side. And so that, I mean, we've gotten compliments about that, like at shows, uh, sadly at smaller shows, they don't, they tend to not have this whole stereo set up for each guitar. So uh yeah bigger venues we're ready for you yeah. <laughs> we got a nice sound <laughs> huge shout out to my boys because dude like we'll get together and like work on tones or like getting all the patch changes and shit and like honestly like i'm just kind of sitting back just waiting for me to like get a tone together and then they're like is this the one you want and i'm like yeah sounds good and then they just take care of the rest so <laughs> um but yeah they they really tied it together as far as the live end goes and uh it it sounds so sick live it's insane oh yeah i bet with you know you guys have a very technical approach with it which is awesome you guys have you know you get the sound that you want and as you said very visually appealing with you know moving to the center as well but you guys put a lot of like thought and effort uh into your stage show yeah and we're looking to try to you know get more get more involved you know whether it's like banners or like if we can get some lights going dude like it's only going to get better that's what we're that's what we're striving for oh yeah no you guys are definitely building that up i look forward to seeing like you know how you guys progress with that as well hell yeah man but i'm curious for all of you uh what is your favorite song to perform live um i'm gonna have to let somebody else go while i think about that <laughs> so far unspoken just because it has like the perfect uh cleans in it and then like the breakdowns i love doing the breakdowns it's, it's my favorite song yeah i would say the one that's newest to the set is ripped off the ep um we just started throwing that in the last three or four shows we've done and i don't know what it is about that song but people just start throwing <laughs> elbows and like doing uh push-ups and cartwheels like like i don't know what it is about that song dude but then it's got the nice clean break that uh that they were talking about earlier and then it uh 
hits you in the face again at the end and people are doing more stupid shit in the pit. It's awesome. Uh, I'd probably have to say ascended the end of it. Uh, it's pretty fun. Cause when the vibes are right, we can like, we actually just jump in the pit. Super fun. And then they, that usually goes into storm, which again, if the vibes are right, I can join in the circle pit you know, and that shit is super fun. Uh, scary. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say ascended to or unspoken. I think they're really fun to play. The crowd reacts really well. It's great. <laughs> so after I've been thinking about it, honestly, I love it's really hard for me, but I really love playing Ascended and Unspoken. Um, but I'm going to cheat and actually go with a third song, and that's going to be our version of Army of Me. Um, just because in the very beginning when we put the song together and like there's like the I don't know, I guess it's like right after the second verse or whatever. There's like this crazy like synth part in the background. And I don't know, anytime that part happens and i'm and like we're playing a show or whatever i'm just mentally somewhere else like anytime and just hearing that synth in the background just like immediately takes me to another world and the thing is is like i used to have dreams of playing that part at like crazy shows so like i don't know i feel like when i get to that part in the song i'm like this is like the best um so i think for me that's like my favorite song to play live just kind of an add on to that, like him saying the synths coming through the PAs and stuff. There are certain things in our live set that you won't hear on the album recordings. Like we'll throw in crazy bass drops in the live set just because we can. <laughs> and, and people like there's one show we did in Austin and a bass drop hit and everyone just, oh, <laughs> like, like, yeah, so selfish plug but come catch a live show and you'll hear some uh some crazy shit well that's kind of the fun of a of a live show is you you know you get things that you might not get from a studio recording so i like that very nice plug by the way <laughs> also um one one show we did um we had to do like a 15 minute set for songs first song in my string broke just like immediately off the rip so i was improving the rest of the set without like having my top string i was like fuck how am i gonna do this so yeah you also you know if you show up you know anything can happen right but it was it was still fun but I, you still made it work though even with one less string exactly plus i had two other guitar players to lean on you know so <laughs> i just had to like figure something else out but it was crazy I don't know for sure, for sure. But now, um, as we're starting to close out, thank you guys so much for hanging out. I had a great time chatting with you guys. Yeah, uh, man, so, same. Now, so for you guys, what's kind of the rest of 2024 looking like for Mass of Amara? Uh, right now, we have a few shows lined up. We have a Halloween festival type show coming up. What's that one called again? It's like Frights and Sounds uh, in San Marcos in October on, on the 5th. Um, we have one in November um, with a band. You know what? Actually, I'm not going to say because it's not exactly confirmed. But um, and then we have one in December. So we have like a few shows coming up like to end the year. And then um, we do have a handful of new stuff that we're working on to hopefully have ready for, you know, next year. So we'll probably be spending the rest of the year working on some fresh regrouping making our set sound better just really like refining everything and then trying to progress forward with new music or you know anything we got to do well right on well i look forward to uh seeing where you guys go next to everything definitely look forward to some more new music as well from you guys but now as we're wrapping this up for everyone watching and listening where are the best places to find mass mamara online uh, it's going to be Instagram, Spotify, uh, iTunes, Apple Music, Facebook, YouTube. I mean, we're all on all those crazy platforms. Um, I don't think we're on Twitter, though. We don't need that. We don't need no Twitter. But, <laughs> but, it's uh, X anyway, now. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, that's going to be where we're all at. Instagram is mainly where we, you know, try to keep everybody updated um, as far as, you know, shows um content as far as what we got going on past shows all the fun stuff 
Um, we're really active on Instagram. So TikTok and yeah. <laughs> so, very good. I, I'll leave some links for Mass Mart in the description. As I said, please check out and support them. Make sure to see them live if you get a chance. But thank you guys so much for stopping by. It's super cool radio. Yeah, man. Thank you for having us. It was fun. Of course, for all of Mass Mara, I'm your host always, Matthew Thomas. Thank you so much for watching and listening to Super Cool Radio. And remember, stay frosty. Hell yeah. yeah dude.